welcome back to Marmoset. As you can see, I just opened it up and we have a fresh scene here. If you don't see the sky that I'm having here, then that's because you don't have those awesome free skies that you can download at gumroad.com used, if I pronounce that correctly. It's um, up for free or pay what you want and they are definitely worth it. There are some good additions here to the overall skies that Mamoset comes with. And it's as simple as pasting them into the Mamoset sky folder. So that's really all you have to do and then reboot Mamoset and you will get a whole bunch of different skies in here. And I haven't quite decided yet which sky I want to pick here for our AK. But first of all, I just want to bring the actual AK into our scene here. And for that, I usually just drag and drop. So I copied the low poly out of our substance folder into the Marmoset folder. And we can really just use that same mesh here. I'm just going to drag it in here. And now we are left here with our AK. And I actually don't want to have this second magazine. Since we brought everything into Marmoset or Substance Painter as individual elements, we can just go ahead and delete that piece here, which we don't need. So the next thing that we want to do is set up our material. And I'm just going to throw these materials out here, which we don't want to have. Often Marmoset already looks at our mesh name and gives it a proper material name. But just in order to make sure that we are setting it up from scratch, I'm going to have this default material here. And again, I will just go over here to our folder and I will drag and drop that into these proper slots that we have here. Gonna put the metalness over here to the specular and all I have to do is switch it over to metalness. I'm gonna have the base color here in our albedo and I will have the roughness in the microsurface slot. And also I want to open up here the occlusion tab just gonna confirm that we wanna have occlusion and drag our AO map in there. And strangely, my metalness map just disappeared. I think that happens when you switch it from spec to metalness, it will just disappear. So I'm just gonna drag it back in there. If you press shift and right mouse button, we can rotate around here. And if you press alt and the left mouse button, we are able to circle around our object here. Pressing Alt and pressing down the middle mouse wheel button will allow us to pan around here. And that's really all that there is to it. But before I get sidetracked here, let's focus on our material first, which is not quite set up yet. If we export from Substance Painter, we have to flip the white channel on our normal map. So you will already see how this will just look not right when it comes in like that. And that just requires us to flip our green channel here. And also we have to invert our gloss. We could have set up like an individual export setting for Marmoset, which is worth doing, but I just wanted to point out how we would approach that if we just export with our default settings in Substance Painter. And that's really all that there is to it. And the only other thing that we also have to do is to change the reflection to GGX. And if you wonder why, um, that was just pointed out by one of the algorithmic guys, the people behind Substance Painter, that if you export stuff over to Marmoset, 
you have to have it in GGX. So now we're really left here with the AK that we also had in Substance Painter. It's basically one-to-one -one and now we can focus on making some nice art here. First of all, I'm gonna go over here to the Render tab and I want to switch on all these lightning settings here. I'm gonna enable our high-res shadows and I'm gonna enable the front face and most importantly these two here will just give us some extra good looks here on the AK. You can see what happens if I disable the local reflections. Just makes the whole thing look a bit dull and um, adding it to it is just the thing that we want to do. We can also always play around here with our occlusion strength. So if you pay attention to certain areas here, gets affected by it. Usually I have the occlusion strength all the way up and then I'm just playing around here with our size parameter. And it's sometimes not easy to find that one formula here that works for all the renders. So very often I just control these parameters individually for every scene and that just helps it to get the most out of it. And next I'm gonna try out a few different um, skies here. I'm actually going to make use of this cathedral sky that I would recommend getting from the free pack that I just showed you. It has some really nice lights in it here as you can see like this reds and white and that usually makes for a really nice sky after a little bit of an adjustment. Oh and for the case I haven't mentioned it yet, if you press space you will just full screen it but you probably already know that anyway. Um, as for our skies themselves, usually what I do is to crank up the brightness on it. And there's not really any common value that always works. If you look here at our HDR image, you will see how the brightness comes from the brightest points here in our actual image. So that is basically like an exposure filter that's overlaid here. And that will also affect our actual mesh that we have here. So setting that to 2.5 might work here in that case. And another thing that we can do is clicking in here and that will add a skylight here. And that skylight, if we go back here into that window, can be dragged around. And that basically, imagine it floating around here in that viewport based on the position that we have it here, we get like different looks here on our AK as you can see. So we can make some interesting stuff with just that. And also it always takes the color that we drag it over. So for example here you can see how that carpet, which is red, tints the whole AK also in that tone. And we can also always go back here into the actual skylight parameters and also increase our like brightness or other settings. We can also give it a different color if we want. Say we want to have some blue in here. And of course we can also mix that with other colors like it will then blend from blue to something else, like red again here. And uh, again, it's a matter of pressing shift and finding the right angle that we like. And I don't really want to have these skylights right now. So usually, before we go ahead and make an actual render, I just want to mention my workflow here that I prefer 
and most of the time I have the mode here to blurred sky and that enables us to further control the blurriness here on that and that already makes it stand out more from our actual object that we want to have the focus on and just makes it very flexible to get a really nice look here. Also the backdrop brightness is quite the important one but often when you drag it all the way down to the very dark tones it will then look a little bit out of place here and in order to counter that we can go into our actual material which by the way would be good to also give a name and we can then try here with the horizon smoothing for example to achieve a bit of a different look like the name suggests, the horizon of our object, it will just make it appear a little bit more, not exactly sure what the word for it is, but the smoothness and the extremeness of the angles, as it says here. So that would be one thing that we could try to make use of. In that case, I think it would actually suit it better to have it all the way down. But in most of the cases, I have it either all the way up or somewhere here in between. And also we could try here on the reflection, the horizontal occlusion does a similar thing, but it seems to be doing it more here in the front. So again, like we had that highlight here and we can make it either completely disappear or appear. And I actually don't want to have it black like that. I'm just going to put it up a bit here. And I want to be talking about the actual camera. Whenever we are in Marmoset, we are looking through a camera. There is no way to actually jump out of it. So by default, we are always looking here through our main camera. And often what I like to do is just press Ctrl and D. That will make a copy of it and we could either leave it like that or call it custom or sometimes I also like to call it um, render one and then I'm just gonna copy it again because our camera is also very powerful in terms of the parameters that we can change here. So usually what I like to do is First of all, find a good spot, something like that here, where we get some nice light reflection. And in order to make the whole AK stand out more here, we can then go into these parameters and adjust, for example, the sharpen filter. And I guess that didn't work because I forgot to switch over here to that duplicated camera that we just created. So now I'm in the duplicated camera, which by the way, if you noticed, it made a little jump here. That's because the main camera is in a different position as the this one. I already moved the main camera after I duplicated it. And the reason why I point that out is because that allows us to find a really good angle that we like. And then we could also call it something like uh, perspective one. And I guess you can come up with any name that you like, as long as you remember it, or as long as it kind of represents what we're actually looking at. And then we can just really adjust the camera to look good on that one particular perspective that we choose for it. And back here to the parameters, usually I crank up the contrast a little bit. Not too much or else you end up like with absolute overexposure, but some subtle amounts as always and also I like to add sharpening to it 
and also again like if you crank it up too much it's gonna be very noisy so we want to make sure we have the right amount for it but before I start adjusting these parameters even further let's talk a little bit about different render styles so I don't want to go here through 10 different renders for that tutorial I just want to explain on some examples how we can approach it and if you have a look here at my portfolio you can see that I try to pick angles that just make it for a very interesting picture and I always look at reference images like Google images and I just punch in the kind of weapon that I just completed and I will then find me a picture that I really like and try to replicate it so this one for example with a white background is inspired by stick gunner or also known as stick man I think he goes under both names a weapon photographer and a really good one on top of that probably the most famous one and let's say we want to have this white background I mean that wouldn't be too hard to achieve let's just take the AK and also let me try a different sky here so this one for example looks interesting has some contrast to it adds a bit of depth to the scene and now it's really just a matter of switching that over here to color and putting it to white and then with shift and right mouse button I will adjust our light position until we are happy with it and I also wanna add a bit more maybe here of extra light to the scene add an additional skylight here as well and you can see how the skylight uh, is kind of affecting our wood here which might be interesting makes it a bit more textured looking and I don't want the skylight to be that strong so I'm gonna lower the intensity on it a bit and back into our main camera here let me find the right contrast here I'm gonna crank it up a bit more add a bit more sharpening sometimes I also like to add the grain to it to give it a bit more of a photo look like a little bit of this noise on top of everything and the other thing that I would then do in such a case is take our model here duplicate it hide the original one and then with our selection here for the copy I will then go over here to transform and just play around here with that until I'm happy with it till we got like an interesting looking angle here which also always then makes our light appear different on it so this one here for example could be nice to just show the AK as as a whole and um, show our complete work and like I just mentioned I like to look at reference images like this one here already has a really nice lighting and as you can see we are not really that far off from it so I'm gonna have it here on the right side on my second monitor and I will just try to replicate that so first of all I will go back here into that thing and I'm gonna take out the 
x rotation and the z rotation I'm gonna have it also on its 360 default value or maybe it was zero I don't know but I don't want to have a rotation on it at the moment and I'm just gonna try to put it like we see it there on that image and it looks like the light is not really the best for it. They probably took that picture in an actual photo studio, so we barely see anything else than white as a reflection. And we can do that by going over here to our sky and just make use of one of the skies that don't come with a whole lot of color in it. So this one here is actually one of my favorites. I'm gonna pick it. And let's see if it works here as well for the AK. Let's see if I can also add another skylight here. Whenever we pick a fresh sky, it will override the skylight. So we have to set that up again. little less brightness here on it and also we have a field of view on the camera so we have it set to 45 and it looks like this here is using much of a lesser angle so that might be also worth doing just to bring it down here to let's say 20 and then zoom out again let me just try to get that angle better would like to get some light reflection here on that side so let me go back in here Take that and that looks already a bit more like it. Child brightness or child light brightness, by the way, is basically a global switch here for our skylight. And that's already quite like our reference image here. If we compare that. So that could be a moment where after we had another look here at our settings and we were happy with it, maybe add a bit more contrast to it again, define our strength amount here that would be then the time to go ahead and say capture image and in order to get that out with the maximum quality we want to make sure that we have the sampling set to 16 if we put it here with the transparency on it will give us basically an alpha of only our object everything else will be transparent and that can also be useful in some cases when we want to do some Photoshop post-processing on it later. And other than that, it would just be a matter of saying image. And it will then save that render in a folder that we can define here under preferences in the output folder. And at the moment, I can see that I have a, the wrong folder set up there. So for the case you wonder where your renders go, that's where you want to have a look at it. So really all that it is, is to find the right light for our scene and an interesting angle. And then we just hit the render button. So same thing here, that already makes for an interesting image right there. 
So that could already be a potential second render. And usually, let's just go back here to that perspective that we had. What I like to do in order to be able to go back here to that scene that we just rendered, I would then also call our camera here. I mean our mesh, sorry, perspective one. So we're already looking through the camera that has this perspective. And I would then just make a copy, go into that copied camera. Also, I want to call it perspective two. And I'm going to make a copy here of this mesh. And then we can just rotate it around until we like it again. Also, it would make sense to call it perspective two. And now we are left here with all these different positions and angles on the camera. And that makes it just quick to go back into it. If we, let's say we look at the render and the next day we don't like it, we don't have to set it up from scratch. We can just load Marmoset and switch back here to whatever camera we set up and in combination with our mesh, of course. And as a next thing, I just want to reference some of my latest work here. You may already be familiar with this grenade. And I got a lot of people asking me if I could explain how I made these renders here. And people asking me actually which render software it is that I was using for it. And the answer is, as you can already guess, it's also Marmoset. And the only difference is that they have a bit of a post-processing added on top in Photoshop. So what I want to do is first of all, find a nice looking angle. If you have a look at the kind of angles that I picked here, I was trying to be really bold with it, like find something that looks powerful and that's interesting to look at. And that's not your everyday grenade free quarter view and I think that's usually a good way to have your render set up to first of all show your gun here as one element and then just show some of the detail work that we did because we want to make sure that we actually show off our hard work that's our reward basically for the many hours that we put into that. And we want to make sure that this is recognized and also makes it just nice to have like additional renders for these elements on our gun or whatever object you want to render. And I will go ahead and make another render here based on this element. And first of all, I want to see which light we could use for that. And very often, if you just assign in a fresh light here, you really have to crank up the brightness on it. Actually, that's the wrong brightness. I want to crank up the, the image brightness because only through that we will actually start seeing something here and then we can only judge whether this is a good sky that we want to be using for our render. And I also, for that render here, same as the one that I just showed you on the grenade, want to have a blurred sky for it. And I guess that looks kind of interesting, but I don't really want it to be here with this uh, red. So we could rotate it around a bit, try to minimize the intenseness of the floor. But I guess since the floor is all red, it's really hard to get entirely rid of it. So I will just go on here and try to find me something else that I like. Let's see here about the smashed windows. Oh, same mistake again, not the backdrop brightness, but our actual brightness. And that would be a little bit too dark here for me, that image, even with, if we crank it up, we don't really get a whole lot of information out of that. So for this case here, I want to be using something else. Let's see about these cathedrals again, which I quite like. 
like this already looks uh, interesting here has some nice blues and some shades of red in it by rotating our scene we get a bit more of this blue tint here onto our rear side leaf which could also be cool so sometimes it's really tough to make that decision like what looks the best because often no matter what you do it all looks cool and you just want to make sure that for example right now it's too dark here so I will just keep on rotating it until the light hits it again and that are the kind of things uh, worth paying attention to when you do these renders. The other thing is that we want to be adding some field of view here to the scene and it's very easy to do that by going into our camera and under focus here we have the depth of field settings which we just need to check and then it's a matter of finding the right focus distance. I guess if you're a photographer you will probably be familiar with these terms here. I myself I'm not a professional photographer but it's easy enough to really make use of it what we have to adjust are our near blur here. So let me just crank it all the way up. You can see how the near blur, the object that is here the nearest to our camera, gets bigger. And by pulling it back here, that slider, we get less of that effect. And the same applies here to our far blur. If we crank that up, it will go all the way from here slowly into our rear side. So that makes it again easy to adjust and we can just focus on making some nice render here with a focus right there on our rear side. And speaking of which, let me also go here back into our image and let's see if I can add some uh, skylight to it again. Let me find the right angle for that. And that looks actually pretty cool here with the light hitting the, the top of it. Maybe we can lower the intensity a slight amount. Go back in here and add another skylight and try to get some more reflection here on that side. So somewhere around here already illuminates it more. And we could also increase the brightness on that as well as taking out some of that color here. Or maybe give it a tint of a blue. Or actually I'd rather keep it somewhere here now white. So somewhere here looks fine. And let me full screen that. Maybe shift the whole Thing up a bit, alt and middle mouse wheel, so that we also see some of our hard surface text that we put in here. I also want to go back here into our material properties and I want to bring down the horizon smoothing and if you pay attention here to the rear side leaf you will see how the light just bounces off better from it. I'm not sure if this is really the perfect explanation for what it's doing, but it just gives the whole thing a bit more of a focus here by having it set to zero here. And in that case, I wanna keep it just like that. For our horizon occlusion here, let's see what that does. Gives us a bit of an extra highlight here at some of these edges. So I don't even mind it also having it here at zero for that render. And also I want that light here, the first one that we put, to appear a little more of a red tone than this yellow that we have. So I'll just bring it down somewhere here. Another thing that we can do is in our 
main camera here, adding a bit more sharpening. And let's scroll down here as well. Let's see what else we got. I want to disable or not disable. I just want to minimize the sharpness of this grain that we have. To demonstrate that, let's just crank it all the way up and bring the sharpness down. We'll just blur it out a bit more. So I actually prefer it to be not that sharp at all. And I will just bring it back down here to some subtle value. Somewhere around here. And we could also add some vignette to the whole thing. If we crank it all the way up, you see again, it will just give us a bit of a focus again here. And that's something that I don't use too often, but in some cases it might make uh, some sense to have it. Also back here to our actual skylight, I want to add a bit more of this brightness to it. it was a bit too dark before. And other than that, uh, that looks like a pretty cool render right there. And I just want to make sure that our render settings are all set up like we had it before. And then we can go ahead and confirm and render that image and open. And now we have this nice render here in our screenshot folder. And I will go ahead and show you what I'm doing with it in Photoshop what that post-processing is all about. And really all that there is to it is to add a bit more depth to it by adding some lens dirt to it. So I will go over here to Google and put dirt lens into the images, scroll down and find one that I like to use. For example, this one here looks really good. And I'm gonna open it, copy it over here as a second layer, Control T, and just bring it here entirely on top of our render. And then I'm just gonna put it into the screen mode. And I will lower the intensity on it. And I also want to add a U if you go down here to the adjustment layers, you can add like a U and saturation to it. And by Alt and clicking here in between the adjustment layer and this image, we can link the saturation only here to that image. And I will just bring down the saturation or else we're having it blending with the color on that image, which we don't want. And also if I zoom in here, that might be a little too noisy now. So we could also try to minimize that or enhance um, by adding another brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And by cranking the contrast up, you see that we are left here with really only those particles and not the whole small stuff that's in between. So that might be a good thing to do and would be here the first pass on that for adding some subtle particles. We could also add another layer here to it. Let me go back to Google and see if I find something else that looks good. And we could try, for example, here with that thing also going to copy it over, add it on top of our layer and bring it down. And I'm just going to make a copy here of these adjustment layers, selecting them and control J will do that. And then I will just add them here also to our actual image. Not sure why the saturation didn't come down. I guess I was undoing that without recognizing it. And also I'm going to add it here to the screen mode. And 
let's see if I can increase the contrast or bring the brightness down and also the opacity, the overall opacity. So now we have some nice little flares here and that just adds more depth here to the whole picture than we had before. So that's really um, something worth doing. Doesn't need to be on every image, but as you can see, it just adds a whole lot to it and is a subtle way of giving it that little extra tweak that we wanna have. And speaking of tweaking, that's just something that is notorious for making your renders. Like right now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking the backdrop could be darker than it is. So nothing easier than that. We can just go back here into Marmoset and on our backdrop properties, bring that down and give it like this nice darkish tone here, which makes the AK stand out even more. And also by having a look at it, I would like to affect the depth of field not entirely here on the handguard. I actually want that metal cap to be visible. So we'll just go back here over to the, the camera and adjust our far blur on it. So now we are also left here with some visible areas on the handguard and I can just go back into our render dialog. Render that new image, open with Photoshop and just drag it back into our scene here. So as you can see, that's really easy and quick to get a different look here. And usually I just render out a few of these images and then I decide which one I prefer. It may also make sense to show it to some people, you know, some of your friends may also have like an opinion. So if three people definitely prefer this one here over this one, then it's probably the one you want to choose. Uh, and other than that, usually it comes with a gut feeling which one you prefer and is entirely up to us. So as you can see, that makes it really easy to process these images. And we can also do some other pass here on top of it. Let's call it the adjustments. Um, we could add some brightness and contrast layers here to it and also individually give it a bit more of color here, maybe some more contrast. We could also just use the U and saturation and bring down the overall saturation or individually some of these channels and that might be another subtle way of giving it a bit of an extra tweak in order for us to have the perfect image that we want to be using. Usually it's a good idea to not go too crazy here with that because we really want to show our work how it's intended to look like and we don't want to fake it too much here with Photoshop. But these two methods here, I wouldn't consider them faking. It's just a matter of enhancing to the beauty of our render. And that's the most normal thing that you can do. Every game studio will do that for their renders as well. Unless it's stated that it's a pure in-game screenshot, there's a good chance that they've been enhanced just to make it shine. And that's exactly what we wanna do with our work. So now we already went through two different kinds of renders one that shows the whole AK and doesn't leave out any details. And this one here that has like a clear focus on a particular object. And as a third one, I want to show you how to make a cool effect like this here. A lot of people ask me how I do that smoke and it's really not hard at all. 
first of all, as always, I like to watch at some reference stuff. So looking at that guy here, shooting that AK until it uh, does some serious smoke on it, kind of reveals that the smoke is coming out of the handguard. So in between the upper and the, the bottom handguard, we have that smoke forming up and I want to replicate that. And what I want to do first of all is make another render that shows our barrel here in combination with the handguard prominently. So back over here to Manoset. I will just make another copy here for the camera. I'm gonna leave the mesh as it is and just switch over here to the camera and now I can just look through the new camera and also disable the depth of field on it. And that right there already looks pretty cool. I'm quite liking that. Maybe lowering the contrast a slight amount will help it. And another thing that I want to show you is the curves, which can also be quite uh, powerful. Like that gives us another way of adjusting our image here already while we're still working on it. So I'm gonna have it here and go ahead with the render, image and open. And the important thing is that now we also need to make a second render in which we want to have transparency on. So I'm gonna save that and say image and open. And now we have both of these images here and I'm gonna bring them into Photoshop. This one here as well as this one and you can see it's uh, perfectly transparent. I'm just gonna drag that image here having shift pressed and dragging will do that gonna drag it over the image that has the background so if I'm inverting that you can see that our background stays the same and we're only having our actual selection here on top of it and now I'll just go back to the browser open up Google Images and I'm gonna search for white smoke black background and let's see what we can use here I want to narrow the quality here to the large ones and this one right here looks like we could use it so I'm gonna copy it paste it here in Photoshop and make the whole thing smaller gonna put it to screen mode and usually I like to have a duplicated layer of that you may remember from the normal map just so that we can always make use of that original image here and I'm gonna work with that one here bring it in between the transparent layer and the one with the background and that already gives us like a masked out region here on the AK and now it's just a matter really of going over here to the AK add a mask to it and I have to do that here I guess I'm so used to substance painter that uh, I forgot about that and now what we can do with that mask here is take our brush same as a substance painter make sure that it's black and we can then just define where we want that smoke to appear pretty much also I want it to come out here out of these uh, handguard elements most importantly actually and 
also we could go over here to the actual layer with the smoke and lower the intensity. It might be a bit too extreme on it. And another thing that I also want to do is back here to the folder with our particles. I'm gonna just take that layer or the folder and drag it here onto that image so that we get some more interesting things happening here. And I just noticed that I dropped that folder here in between those two images. I actually want that to be on top, the particles. And also then the smoke here, that was just like a, a quick thing to show how it's done. It might be a little too dominant here. Uh, so we could always just, first of all, rotate it around maybe, make it look like that. That might actually be more interesting even. And further then adjust here our masking on it. Like that smoke here should really look like it's coming out there. And um, on the smoke itself also we can apply a mask here to get rid of certain aspects like uh, this one here. So again, you could then just take away here from the parts that we really don't want to have. And that makes for a pretty cool way to quickly add some interesting stuff here to the image. Of course, we can also just copy that layer and flip it vertically and see if it still looks good if we have it coming out here to the bottom part as well maybe with lesser opacity and also it would require a bit of a masking here again And we could also always go into the individual smoke layer here into the mask and with a really big brush just take away a bit of that smoke so that it doesn't look the same as the one that we have here on top. And yeah, that is uh, basically the way to add something like that here to the scene. I hope that you are um, gonna have some cool renders with that. And other than that, let's jump back to Marmoset and see what else we should cover here. And there are two things that I would say are still missing that are definitely worth mentioning, which is first of all the animation feature that Marmoset comes with, the turntable animation. And the turntable, as the name suggests, allows us to render out an image sequence such as that here. So really all that we need to do with that image sequence is then to bring it into a video editing software such as, for example, After Effects. And from there we can just export it out as any video type. and. That's just a nice addition that Marmoset comes with. So in order to set that turntable up, I'm gonna again duplicate our camera here, give it a proper name, zoom out here, and all that we have to do now is go over here to the animation tab press play and start spinning our object here. While that rotates, we can also adjust our camera in real time. So for example, we could bring the depth of field back into it, which might be a cool addition. Probably wanna take out the near blur and just have it here in the in the distance or maybe also here in the front i guess it's it's a matter of preference here 
and also what we can do is back here to the animation we can also spin our camera gonna stop that and once we like our animation we can then just go over here to capture and under turntable as soon as we press that it will start rendering out frame by frame this animation and we can also go over here to settings and get a few parameters here for our turntable itself so let's say the duration here should probably be longer than one second so that should be somewhere around I don't know 20 and also we can adjust our frame rate here as well sometimes it might be worth to crank that up a bit like I'm usually having it somewhere at 60 or 90 I don't remember exactly but that just makes it a really smooth animation when you put it back into After Effects so that would be the turntable and the last thing that I want to be talking about is the Marmoset viewer and that's a really cool thing that allows us to look at our stuff here online ArtStation makes it really easy to upload it so that's where I have my Marmoset scenes and um, it's just another cool thing that we may or may not want to use and for the case that you think it's worth having there are some things worth considering which is that our texture resolution needs to be small enough to fit within 15 megabytes so that consists our actual 3d model the textures and the scene whatever we have in the scene so 15 megabytes is the maximum size for ArtStation and that means that we have to scale down some of our individual textures that we have assigned here in our material. So let me just demonstrate to you what I'm talking about. Viewer export and I will choose the proper folder here. I'm gonna call that AKM save and let's export it by default the texture quality is set to high but for my taste that is not high enough that makes it really blurry and washed out so I want to have it at unreasonable to really make sure we have the maximum available quality so we'll go ahead here and export our AK And let me have a look at the result of that. Here we have the exported file. And as you can see, it's 22, seven megabyte large. And that is unfortunately too big for ArtStation, which demands us to have it within 15 megabytes. So now what we could do alternatively is back in the viewer export, put that to high and that will compress the textures dramatically so that it fits into like a way smaller file size. It, it will then export it like six megabytes big in total. And again, that is just too washed out for us. That will just make it lose a lot of the details that we have on it. And that would just be a shame really. So in order for us to get the maximum out of it here, of our details, we have to make um, some tough decisions. And I will go back into Photoshop and also open up here the texture folder, our Marmoset texture folder, and I will just make a selection for everything, copy it, and I'm gonna call that folder here Z viewer I'm gonna paste the textures in there and the reason why I was doing that is that now we have a second set here of our textures that we can bring down in size individually so instead of letting Marmoset decide which textures it considers 
worth compressing, or actually Marmoset will just take everything and downsample it the same, we now have actual control over how big we want these textures to be here. And that means that we can then have our normal map in our native maximum resolution at 4K, which is the most important map really. And other maps such as the gloss map and the metalness map, which basically consist out of black and white tones mostly, we can bring down to, for example, 2K here for the gloss and maybe 1K for the metalness map because this one here is really just black and white. And that will then hopefully bring down the file size of our viewer file to some reasonable 15 megabytes that we can upload to ArtStation. And also I want to disable the occlusion map here for it. The viewer doesn't even support occlusion as far as I know. So disabling that will already save us something like two megabytes or so. And I will go ahead here and open our metalness map. And I'll go over here to image and image size and scale it down quite dramatically here to 1K. So if I zoom in there, that still leaves us with uh, some information and it may not be so significant to have it all the way up at 4K. So we'll just go over here and say file and save. And now back to Marmoset, I'll make a copy here of that material, duplicate it. And I'm gonna call it Marm AKM Viewer. And then over here to the folder, I will just drag in our metal map and override it with the 4K metal map. So this one now is 4K, uh, I mean 1K. And now I will just make a copy here again of that mesh, call it viewer, have it selected, or actually I'll just take over the material here and drag it onto that selection. And now we have a 1K metalness map on that instead of a 4K. And I'll go back here to the viewer and see if it's already down to 15 megabytes. And unfortunately it's not, it's, at, it's still almost at 20 so that almost didn't do anything here with the metalness. And that means that the next victim is going to be our roughness map. Let's open that one. And I will then go ahead, scale it down to 2K and also save it. Back to Marmoset and Overwrite the roughness here with the old roughness. And let me just double check that I really have that material assigned here. Let's make another test. And it already exported. Let's go back here to the right folder and see what happened. And now we're almost getting there. It's 16.5. Uh, Unfortunately, we still have to scale another map down. And in that case, I may wanna pick our albedo, go back here to our Marmos at viewer folder and open the base color, which is the albedo. And yes, that's what I meant with tough decisions earlier. Unfortunately, that is really the only thing that we can do to make that work. Again, let me assign our albedo back to that here. And now we should be able to properly export it. And now we have it under 15 megabytes. So that means that we can now go over to ArtStation. And if you are new to ArtStation or you don't have an account here, 
I would definitely recommend you to sign up for it. It's a great place to put your art and comes with a really nice interface and makes it very easy to upload all sorts of files. Like I can embed videos here, for example, straight from YouTube and people can comment on it, which is awesome. So I'm really loving ArtStation ever since I discovered it, which is not even that long ago. So once we are here in our account on ArtStation, I will then just go over here. I'm just gonna explain that. Some of you may already know that. And I will then create new artwork, call it AKM Viewer. And over here, you already see the right button for it, which is at Marmoset Viewer. And I will then just navigate over here to the right folder which we are already in and double click the viewer file. And once this is done, you see that ArtStation already choose a preview thumbnail here for it, which we can also customize by just uploading any image that we want to have in there, as long as it looks good in a square format. And as for our Marmoset viewer file, let's see what it looks like. I'm not gonna publish it already, but I just gonna give it a test here. Gonna save that. And now I can preview it on the community. Let's see how that turned out. And that looks really good. Like that's exactly what we wanted. As you can see, really nice. People can actually have a look at the model and just have a look at your art also allows us to change the light shift and left mouse will do that so that makes it for a really nice and cool feature here that i thought was definitely worth covering as for our scene here i'm just gonna go back here to our actual model and put the original texture on it, which is 4K. And that's the resolution that you want to make sure you're using when you make your, your actual textures, of course. So that you have absolutely the maximum quality in your portfolio. And we are in fact at the very end of our AKM tutorial here. I hope that you liked it and that you learned a lot of new things on the way. That would be my biggest accomplishment for having spent many weeks working on that. And I would of course love to hear back from you. I have my art station, my Twitter and my Facebook page reserved for exactly that. So please don't hesitate to leave me a comment and uh, feedback for that course. You can support me by sharing that tutorial on some social media platforms and let your friends know about it. That would of course be excellent. And other than that, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again in some future tutorial workshop.